Hello, everybody. I think we're going to get started. Uh, welcome to the Communitech Data Hub, and welcome to our online viewers as well. My name is Kusha, and I work with Communitech. Um, before we begin, we'd like to thank Encore, the evolution of network services through a corridor in Quebec and Ontario for research and innovation, for supporting the 5G testbed here, which is run out of the Data Hub. Encore is a partnership made possible in part by funding from the Canadian government and the provincial governments of Quebec and Ontario. In Ontario, Encore is coordinated by Ontario Centres of Excellence. We would also like to thank the five world-class digital technology companies which have spearheaded this initiative, Ericsson, Sienna, Thales, IBM Canada, and CGI. I am pleased to introduce today's speakers and guests from Ericsson, Sienna, and OCE. Kyle White is the Encore Program Manager at Ericsson. He has over 10 years of experience managing highly technical projects centering around carrier-grade wireless networks, multi-vendor interoperability standards, and software delivery. He holds a BSc specializing in electrical engineering from Queen's University and an MBA from the University of Fredericton. Jeff Eaton has accumulated 25 years of experience in the telecom industry at companies such as Juniper Networks, Alcatel, Nortel, and several startup companies building advanced telecommunication solutions for service providers and large enterprise. He has recently joined Sienna as a senior solutions architect focusing on the design and deployment of the 5G Encore network across Ontario and Quebec. Suthan Sivanesan is the business development manager at OCE. Suthan has over 15 years of experience in technical project management across major industry leaders such as BlackBerry, Sienna, and Nortel. He is also a lead instructor on the subject and holds a BSc in electrical engineering from the University of Ottawa as well as an MBA from Wilfrid Laurier University. Everyone, please welcome Kyle, Jeff, and Susan. Hi, everyone. Thank you uh, for taking the time today to participate in this uh, information session that we're holding. Um, as mentioned, my name is Suthan Sivanesan with uh, Ontario Centers for Excellence, Business Development Manager, and uh, I'm going to take you through some of the programming uh, that's available for this program in support of this program. Then I'll pass it on to Kyle to take you through some of the technical and technologies uh, that are supported through this program as well. So to start, who is OCE? Some of you may be familiar, some of you may not have heard of us. We're basically a non-for-profit organization that's primarily funded through the government. And our objective, uh, alongside the government's objective, is to create jobs and uh, create economic um, uh, growth for the SMEs that we work with, as well as make Ontario a bit more competitive, or more competitive, I should say, on the global scale. Um, and our top three measures of success are job creation and job retention, uh, industry co-investment, as well as private sector follow-on investment. In terms of what we do, um, it's really focused on these five pillars. Um, not going to get into the details of it, but I'm going to focus mainly on the advanced technology platform. But briefly, uh, we have programming to support industry academic uh, R&D collaboration, entrepreneurship-based uh, uh, based activities, commercialization and demonstration, advanced technology platform, which we're going to get into, as well as clean technology. So these are the programming areas that we have various programs that sit underneath that. And as mentioned, my focus is going to be on the advanced technology platform. And if you want to see a full list of all the programs that we offer, um, I encourage you to visit our website um, where you can uh, navigate and learn more about us and the other programs. In terms of the advanced technology platform, there are really four categories that reside underneath this, uh, under this umbrella. And really, it's about uh, programs that have a high impact to Ontario. We believe that there's going to be um, a lot of focus in terms of the innovation that's happening in this space, and so there's programming to be able to support that. The first one being the Autonomous Vehicle Innovation Project, uh, sorry, Network. Uh, this has to do with anything in the connected um, vehicle, autonomous vehicle space. So if you have technology, if you have project ideas, and you want to be able to uh, take advantage of that funding that's available here, uh, that's the program for you. Uh, the next one is the IBM Innovation Incubator Project um, program, I should say, um, and it's really focused on smart computing. So it's all about AI, machine learning, blockchain, any of those technologies that, that might be um, uh, being used by yourself in, in your projects and your solutions. There's programming to be able to help you work on the IBM uh, platform, the Watson platform, to be able to leverage their tool sets while developing your solutions. Um, and then the next program is the Next Generation Network Program, and, and this is really all about cloud computing. It's about um, you know, access, getting a, gaining access to a private 
um, cloud sandbox to be able to run any kind of validation projects that you have for robustness testing, scale testing, you know, you name it from, from a cloud perspective, you're able to run um, all the validation you need before you go to a commercialized state. So you can get all of those learnings out of the way before you actually begin to uh, grow your customer base and scale. And then the, f the last program in this portfolio is the Encore 5G program, which is the program we're gonna, we're gonna talk about at length um, during this session. Um, the program is primarily divided up amongst the following streams. The first one being the demonstration program uh, fund. Um, and that program is really to help accelerate time to market by providing access to this innovative platform for companies to be able to work on. And it's essentially a pre-commercialized 5G testbed that's available to be able to run projects so that you can sort of get ahead of the curve in terms of developing your solutions, validating your solutions, and being ready once these networks start to roll out uh, by some of the major carriers. Um, the next program, that's, the next stream that's available here is a talent internship stream. So this is all about bringing on talent to be able to work on those projects on the, uh, on the iPaaS testbed. And then the last program here is a anchor firm driven challenge statement projects. Um, and this is essentially for academic fo focused partnership projects to, to, be, to, be taken, to take place, as well as SME focused partnership projects to take place. So these are programs where uh, the anchor firm Siena, Ericsson, Thales, I should be comma there, um, put out challenge statements and they invite academics and or SMEs to be able to participate in it. So it's very focused uh, project work. And um, again, the focus of this presentation is really gonna be on one and two. For the third one, I encourage you, again, to visit our website to be able to get more information about that specific um, uh, stream. In terms of the uh, iPaaS testbed, the Encore testbed, um, it's, it's basically located at three spots in Ontario. Uh, one in Ottawa, at Invest Ottawa, one in Waterloo, right here, actually, at the, at the Community Tech Data Hub, as well as uh, in Toronto at the Mars um, in Mars Discovery District. And you know, one thing to keep in mind is I know that we're talking here at Communitech, but <clears throat> projects can be initiated and supported from any of these sites. So uh, for our online uh, participants, our online viewers, um, if you guys are you know, in one of these sites or close to one of these sites, um, you, can, uh, you can definitely take advantage of uh, the test hub by, um, by connecting to one of these sites. In terms of the uh, funded project, so the demonstration project, um, this is essentially an overview of what the program entails. There's a lot more information on our website, but at a high level, it's to help um, companies develop, prototype, and demonstrate new pre-commercial products and services. And the solution should be highly innovative or disruptive in nature and leverage the Encore testbed. Um, projects should be focused on addressing uh, a marketplace need as well as, um, um, as well, you do not necessarily need to have a strategic partner uh, to be able to run a project, but I always say it's beneficial. It just helps with the commercialization pathway and the ability to understand exactly what that market pull is. Um, and it's open to SMEs, so less than 500 people, uh, 500 employees, and there is an eligibility criteria that needs to be met. Um, again, um, more information available on the website or uh, by speaking to one of the business development managers at OCE. In terms of funding, it's uh, $50,000 from OCE that must be matched one-to-one -one by the company, and uh, the project duration could be up to 12 months. So you could be in the cycle of uh, developing, prototyping, testing uh, for 12 months, and then at the end, demonstrate what it is that you have um, set out to demonstrate. Um, and in terms of the way to think about this one-to-one -one match is you have to envision it as being a $100,000 project if you're, if you're tapping into the maximum, and it's basically 50% of that is reimbursed by, by OCE. Uh, eligible expenses can include salaries, prototyping costs, software costs, anything that can help to run your project are, are eligible. Capital expenses, uh, not so much. Um, and then lastly, there's also an unfunded stream that's available to SMEs. So if you say, you know what, we don't really care about the money, but we want access to the system, there is an option for that as well for, for companies who are interested in that. Talent Edge Internship. So again, building on the, the project theme, you know, if you need talent to be able to run these projects because maybe you know, your current uh, staffing or workforce is working on things that have to be, get, have to be done immediately, but uh, an Encore project would be a bit more future looking, 
and you want to bring on talent to be able to work on that, um, there's an opportunity to be able to fund students. And um, uh, these students can be um, either a final year undergrad from a non-co-op program, uh, or a recent graduate, a recent master's graduate, or a current master's, current PhD student. So these uh, individuals would be eligible and can participate in projects that are run at the company itself. Um, so the, 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 the benefit here, sorry, the, 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 the distinction here is that the projects also have to be run uh, on the Encore test bed. So there has to be a link to the test bed again. Um, placement could be for either four months, eight months, or 12 months, and the student obviously has to be eligible, must, needs to be eligible to work in Ontario. Um, based on a 12-month uh, example here, there's up to $30,000 available from OCE, which the company does, must then match with $15,000 of cash and $15,000 of in-kind for a total value of $30,000 from the company. And uh, eligible expenses, again, uh, are you know, intern salaries, uh, mentorship of the intern, and any other project operating costs that need to be included there. So that's the talent uh, side of things. Um, there is an application, there is a process involved in getting going. So if you have a project idea and you, and you decide, you know what, this is something that I want to take advantage of, you like the fact that there's funding available for it, there is a process involved. I'm not going to go through the process, but what I'm going to say is start by connecting to an OC development manager. So if you already have one, great, reach out to them, start the conversation. If not, my contact information is here, and if not, the website, our website is here as well, and all of my colleagues are listed on the website, so you, know, you can identify one that's close to you and begin the process. And we will happily engage and happily take you through the process of, um, of scoping out projects and helping you get on to the task bed. With that, I'm going to pass it on to Kyle to take you through the technologies that are supported. All right, perfect. How's everyone doing today? Great, so I'm gonna run you through uh, a few things here today. And uh, the three goals I want you to be able to take away from is I hope I'm able to familiarize yourselves with more about what is 5G, what 5G capabilities we will have on the Encore platform throughout 2019, and a brief look at 2020 plus, as well as how would a small medium enterprise use the iPass network? So to start, I'll uh, start us off with a brief video. You'll forgive me for a second here. The, uh, the PowerPoint embedded video takes a minute. Two G, three G, four G. They've all revolutionized the way we live our lives. And Ericsson has been leading the way. So, so when, when it, comes it comes to 5G, 5G it's, it's easy, easy to, to think, think it's, it's just another G. G. Well, well, it's, it's not. not. With 5G, things, things will be faster. faster. And we mean a, a lot faster. faster. With, With global, global mobile, mobile data, data traffic, traffic doubling every 18 months, months the world's demand for high-speed connectivity, connectivity increases every second. And, and that's, that's where 5G, 5G comes in. By efficiently providing the capacity for massive data growth. So what does this mean for you? It means high-speed connections for everyone always. Fast and uninterrupted sharing, streaming, and browsing so that you'll never have to fight for data, no matter the competition. But it's not only about speed. 5G will reduce latency to a minimum, making delays virtually impossible to proceed. It means elevating reality even further. It means fiber speeds without fiber at home for everyone everywhere. And with network slicing technology, every connected service can get its own unique part of a 5G network, fully dedicated and guaranteed for each specific purpose. It means the internet of things on an industrial scale, making society more sustainable, increasing resource efficiency, connecting vehicles to get there both faster and safer. It means protecting the most vulnerable road users, detecting accidents before they happen, and helping save lives with dedicated networks for critical services. 
With Ericsson's leading 5G technology paving the way, the full potential of connectivity is becoming reality. Join us. Let's explore 5G. All right, so that uh, video basically gave you an or overview of uh, some of Ericsson's thoughts on how 5G is going to revolutionize the world and why we think it, it is a quantum leap above 4G. And we'll get into a little bit of uh, some of the specifics briefly here. So, uh, and I'm hoping to educate uh, some of you on uh, some of the differences of 5G and 4G here. So 5G, a big part of 5G is what we call new radio or NR technology. And essentially what it is doing is increasing the spectral efficiency of current LTE deployments uh, by the capacities you see here relatively. Now what we also see here is that we're introducing capabilities in mil millimeter wave bands where we had no capability before. And in urban areas, this is gonna provide a densification of the network that is gonna catapult enhanced mobile broadband services into a new generation. A big point to understand about 5G is that it is use case driven. And what we mean by that is that 4G or LTE was designed from the ground up to be a mobile data service, meaning expecting all data to be mobile all the time and not differentiating between the types of services that are provided as most of the services are provided over the top of the network. Now, if you know if your user is always stationary, always doing video, always mobile at high speeds, you can optimize your service delivery and enhance the overall user experience for everyone using the network. The three major pillars we talk about in 5G are massive machine type communications, critical machine type communications, and enhanced mobile broadband. You can see on this spectrum from this chart is that as we move from left to right, our latency requirements go up, meaning latency needs to be driven through the floor to enable some of these applications like remote surgery. We'll touch briefly on the Encore 5G roadmap. So in the first quarter of 2019, our network is capable of a mobile throughput of 300 Mbps, and we have a typical latency, a network latency in the range of 20 to 40 milliseconds. As we look out into the second quarter of 2019, we are upgrading the network to provide a mobile capacity of one to two gigabit per second, and expect the latency to drop between 10 and 20 milliseconds. How we're doing that is leveraging some of the 5G technologies available today. So Massive MIMO uh, is a big component of 5G networks, and we currently have Massive MIMO LTE Advanced Network deployed today, leveraging Band 42. We also have edge compute and adva advanced optical networks provided by Sienna. In the second quarter, we are upgrading the network to a 5G non-standalone NR configuration, leveraging millimeter wave. We'll also be deploying uh, IoT-specific radio access technologies that enable the hundreds of thousands of connected devices per cell. We will also be deploying a technology called control and user plane separation, which will enable applications to be hosted at the cell edge, lowering application throughput latencies and eliminating the latency of the public internet for these applications. As we look out to the second half of 2019, we plan to increase our capacity to upwards of three gigabits per second, uh, deploying new cloud platforms, as well as enabling massive carrier aggregation. 2020 plus, we will update the network again to deploy 5G standalone NR, leveraging multiple 5G bands and enabling network slicing technology. I wanted to go through some specific industry examples with you guys. A, a good example of a 5G critical machine type communication is the manufacturing of blade integrated disks. The alloys used in this manufacturing process are very valuable and the manufacturing process is very intensive, taking upwards of two days to complete a single disc. The only feedback they get out of this manufacturing process is at the completion of the milling process. Now, 
it is an expensive process to undertake it in both time and material if there was an error in that manufacturing process. What we, Ericsson has done is uh, introduced a uh, pilot or proof of concept with this manufacturer of gen engine components where we attach a vibration center to their milling tool so we can get real-time feedback as to the successful of the operation during the milling process. This enables the operator to take action should there be a problem in the midst of the milling process, not losing time and the valuable alloy material. A success story uh, from a US-based uh, SME delivering uh, utility metering solutions leveraging the CAD M1 and NBIOT capabilities um, is capstone metering. And they have metering solutions from uh, gas, water, etc. 5G enhanced mobile broadband. This is one of my favorites. Um, last year at the 2018 US Open, um, Ericsson and Fox combined to broadcast 4K ultra high def video over a 5G network. At scale, when commercialized, this technology essentially eliminates the need for miles and miles and miles of cable at any PGA event, lowering setup time and lead time for that event. Okay, so how does an SME use iPass? First, and the best way, is to connect through one of the innovation hubs uh, across Ontario and Quebec, located at Waterloo, Toronto, Ottawa, Montreal, and Quebec. The advanced wireless networks are available at these hub sites, as well as introducing yourselves to these hubs will enable you to leverage the business support services that they provide. Android application on a wireless device. So here what we have is a simple illustration of an Android application leveraging the ultra high bandwidth of the Encore network. App server located connected to the public cloud, whether that is in AWS, on a private site, publicly hosted, whatever. The SME essentially needs to load their APK onto an Android device and they have that advanced connectivity. Tethering of peripherals to a wireless device. So many applications that are envisioned are involving you know, 4K cameras, uh, sensors, you know, LiDAR sensors, um, laptops, drones, et cetera. The tethering, like my laptop is today on our network, um, enables these use cases with the you know, attachment to an app server over the public internet as the previous case illustrated. Embedded development. So one of the use cases we wanted to enable is that we recognize that not all new products and services are pure, purely virtual, meaning there are small medium enterprise still interested in developing physical products that require embedded connectivity. As a result of that, we've identified a partner to provide uh, SOCs with the supported RF configuration of the Encore network. The Quectel EG12 chipset, SOC, and EVB are available to SMEs to leverage on the Encore program. So one way to connect into the network today is through a wired connection via your laptop. And what this enables SMEs to do now is to begin the development of their edge computing solutions leveraging the Encore compute capabilities without waiting for the control and user plane separation feature that is coming in the second quarter. Cloud platforms. This is one aspect of the Encore network that does not require you to be physically at, located at any of the hubs. The IoT Accelerator and Sienna Emulation Cloud are two platforms that are available over the public internet and can be accessed today remotely from these hub sites. Okay, now you'll have to bear with me a little because this gets a little in depth and it's a bit of an eye chart, but I wanted to give a more in depth illustration of an IoT application example in Encore. 
So what you'll see in the top left there is a bunch of IoT sensors connected using the lightweight machine-to-machine -machine protocol over the NB-IoT radio access technology using band 14. That, that lightweight machine-to-machine -machine protocol act, uh, pushes data into the IoT Accelerator Cloud Platform. An SME app server can connect into the IoT Accelerator Platform using its RESTful APIs to pull out that data, merge it with other valuable data, such potentially from Google Maps, the weather network, et cetera, create value, and then publish that data to their clients, one be being a web app, or two, over the Encore network, leveraging HTTP over LTEA over band 42 today. So talking a little bit more about the IoT Accelerator. The IoT Accelerator essentially enables connectivity insights that are not available on other cloud IoT platforms today. Leveraging Ericsson's position and, and relationship with mobile network operators around the world, we were able to provide unique data insights into mobile connected devices. We have a suite of APIs that also allow for third party feeds uh, to be collected via the IoT Accelerator, as well as the northbound APIs for publishing of data to directly to clients or to other cloud services. And I'll invite Jeff uh, Eaton up from Siena to talk a little bit more about the Siena Emulation Cloud and use. add on to anything I might have missed. Oh, you're going to use that? Perfect. Yeah, I can use this. Thank you. The Siena Emulation Cloud is very similar to the IoT, but it's dealing with the infrastructure component of the optical network and packet network that we've built end to end. So it's an open API architecture similar to the IoT application environment. And end users or SMEs can come in and it allows you the opportunity to do API calls for configuration of the network elements. Uh, if you want to create an orchestration type system, it opens the door for, for things like that from a business side as well. Um, this is supported also in the cloud. Uh, we're also using our emulation cloud right now as a phase one for Encore Compute. So if you have an application that you wish to run within Encore, we actually have a platform that supports x86. So as long as your cores, memory, et cetera, meet the criteria, we go through an onboarding process where we can take an SME application load it into our platform, and it sits physically within the Encore network. Um, Kyle covered off a lot of the good points on how to use it. Just so everybody's aware, we've defined approximately eight onboarding use cases, from physically showing up here and sitting in the zone and connecting to the network, to let's say somebody who happens to sit in Waterloo and driving here every day or every other day is not convenient, we can work with you to set up an IPsec connection from your remote office in, which will also allow you to potentially run your application remotely at your, your location there and access your equipment within Encore. Um, we have, like I said, about eight use cases. More than happy to go through you know, them at a later date and help let you know what's there. But don't think that you must come here in order to access the Encore network. We've made provisions to facilitate that. And just quickly before handing it over, on the business side, one of the things that I think is interesting, and Kyle can probably talk to this a little bit more though, when you think about your applications and your services that you're looking right now in your total addressable market, if you have applications that require a wireline XDSL or a cable network or something like that because of the bandwidth, the latency, et cetera, what 5G opens up from the business side is a new marketplace. You now, your TAM has just gone from what you were limited to on the wireline side to the wireless side because of the bandwidth, the lower latency, and the ability to do things depending on what you're doing with a mobile edge computing closer to the cell sites. So when you start thinking of it that way, you know, it's a different vent, a different way. You may have an application now that works in your wireline. Let's explore how would it work in, your, in the wireless environment to address, to, to increase your total addressable market. And with that, thank you. Thanks. I'm okay. I got this thing. Oh, yeah, you got yeah. <laughs> I got to get me one of these. When I'm angry at somebody on a phone call, I know what to do. Yeah. Sometimes that's me. Um, <laughs> 
so with that, I think, uh, I think we're at the end of our presentation, everyone. So I'd be, uh, Jeff and I would be both happy to address any questions you might have about uh, potentially 5G or, uh, or the Encore network or its program. Yeah, for sure. I have two questions. Uh, it sounds like this is available now. Is that true? Yes. Okay. And um, what are the limitations on our use cases? So if we connect to uh, the network, do we have any limitations or boundaries that we have to play within uh, for data consumption, data storage? Um, from a data consumption point of view or a bandwidth point of view, you're only limited by the max uh, capabilities of the network at that time okay. and the ability to share that with other SMEs who may be using that same spectrum at the same time. Um, from a data storage point of view, uh, I'd ask Jeff to probably take that one because I'm unfamiliar with uh, the storage availability in the Encore Compute solution. Okay. Yeah, that's a good question. So um, the x86 platform that we have currently in place, we've put in the largest platform we have. So what we would do is work with yourselves and figure out how to address uh, uh, storage within the network. Um, I, I, I'm gonna, shame on me, I can't remember the total number of cores, memory, and storage space. But part of that could also be, um, if depending on how you want to do it, when a storage hits a certain sh threshold, because it is a x86 box, we could work with you to generate a script that could also run, crone or something like that, depending on what you're doing, and offload it so that your new set of data gets collected, offload it, et cetera, collect it, offload it to a laptop or a remote location, depending on what. We we're, we're truly trying to be as flexible as we can to accommodate all potential use cases. So when you see the use cases that we've defined to date, we've got eight of them right now that we've thought of. If you don't see one that matches you, please do not stop from continuing on and having the conversation. We're, we'll do everything we can to accommodate. What are the costs associated in using this? Yeah, in terms of the funding, um, there's $50,000 available to be able to run a project on, uh, on the system, using the system. So costs can involve, uh, the eligible costs can involve salaries for developers, um, it could involve any kind of project costs, so software licenses, any prototyping activities that you're doing. So those kind of things can be uh, considered an eligible cost, and $50,000 is, is available that needs to be matched one-to-one -one by the company. So outside of your project operating costs, there is no additional cost to access the Encore network. Yeah. <laughs> there we are. Um, what about licensing in the future? Is that going to be the option for various different uh, access uh, bandwidth and or uh, capacity? Is there going to be a licensing fee that will eventually come into the system? Uh, for the Encore program, um, right now we don't envision uh, trying to monetize uh, the network based on SMEs. Uh, so if you're a small and medium enterprise and you want access to a certain QoS and, and uh, need a very targeted use case and you require, okay, I need you know, a guaranteed bandwidth of 100 Mbps wirelessly in this region. That's something that we can work with you on in, in figuring out how we deliver that guaranteed quality of service. But at the moment, we don't env uh, envision licensing that um, quality of service uh, capability. So the cost is directly development cost and then publishing cost? Correct. Right. right. Okay, thank right. you. I'm not sure I quite caught it. What were the eight identified use cases? So um, Kyle walked through how to use the Encore network, a couple of examples, right? And there's m 
hundreds that we didn't even touch on. The identified con uh, connection use cases are such as, I'll give you a few examples. Um, if you want to use the Encore network, you can physically come here and there's a room that you can sit in, you connect to it, which connects you into the Encore network. We've created VPNs within the Encore network so that, you know, Jeff Eaton, who's sitting here as an SME, and yourself, who's sitting here as an SME, I can't see your stuff, you can't see my stuff. The other use case that we've identified as an example is, let's say, again, you sit in Waterloo, or sorry, we are in Waterloo, Windsor, and you would like access to the Encore network, but driving's not convenient. We'll work with you to set up a IPsec tunnel between a firewall that you would have on your site that you're responsible for, to firewalls that we've placed within Encore at strategic locations, that would then get you onto the Encore network, which maps directly to your VPN, and you can then have access to the Encore network that way within here, which goes to the Ericsson site and off to the, uh, off to the uh, radio stuff. Uh, another use case would be you show up here with a server where your application runs. You can sit down in the working zone, you can plug your server in, your app is running on your server, you plug your laptop into your server, your server application is talking to IoT devices on the Ericsson side. Is that the, okay, I, thought, I thought you meant access VPNs with non-application Yeah, right. the, the application it, use it's cases It's an overloaded are, term. Yeah, it, yeah. It's an overloaded term. Yeah. Um, so some of the 5G use cases, um, we'll go back to here, just to, we'll bring it up to talk to a little bit here as we answer some questions. So these three pillars or use case categories um, capture just some of what we envision to be 5G use cases. Um, so you're talking about the massive machine type communications area. So here you're talking really about your low data rate, infrequent data applications, but massive amounts of sensors. You know, metering solutions, agriculture, logistics, tracking, et cetera. Um, within critical machine type communications, you also have a variety of use cases. We have uh, industrial application and control, and automation, remote manufacturing, autonomous manufacturing, um, traffic safety and control, and, and remote surgery uh, with haptic and tactile internet. Um, enhanced mobile broadband, I mean, we have a huge spectrum of, of uh, applications, and these are typically the more consumer-focused ones, um, where we have you know, fixed wireless access to your home, enabling fiber-like speeds uh, everywhere, um, enterprise connectivity, Venues, mobile and wireless fixed access, um, support of eSIMs, you know, the next generation of smartphones, VR, AR, 4K, 8K, et cetera. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, we're trying, we're trying to align on the terminology so that when we talk about use cases, we're talking about, you know, potential vertical use cases, and then how an SME on boards, we're trying to figure out what to call that essentially. Yeah, and, and thank you, because that actually mm -hmm. did flag based on the previous discussions we've had. We're now probably gonna call it connection methods instead mm -hmm. of use cases, because yeah. that would help. It seems to be generating confusion, so thank you. Hello, um, I'm just wondering, I might have missed it, but what are the limitations, right? You, what, like, range, is this system all over North America? What are we talking about in terms of, like, because we're a robotics company, we're from ClearPath Robotics, and our clients are all over the shop, right? Right. So, if we want to use this, I'm sure it's not going to be in, like, the back end of the tundra, right? No, absolutely not. So, so the network is sent around the five in innovation hubs, um, as we mentioned, and, and really the programming is around developing prototypes. So it's not for your commercial applications that are already, you know, um, in sales, in production, et cetera. It is for the development of new prototypes, new solutions. So the idea being that you would uh, take your new idea or potentially your existing project that you want to create a new project under the OCE banner with and um, bring that development to the sites to leverage the advanced wireless network capabilities, or one of the cloud platforms from a remote point of view. Um, in terms of limits, um, aside from the bandwidth and latency limits published here today, we are limited by the physics of RF propagation um, around these hub sites. We, so generally speaking, right now, we only have the one site in each city. 
So with uh, band 42 LTE, our current coverage range is around 1.5 to 2 kilometers in terms of delivering an advanced throughput. Um, and then that, you know, with millimeter wave, that, that'll change, et cetera. And our intent really is to uh, update the community um, with coverage maps as, as they become available. And we are just, we, we were guns a blazing, get this network built and roll out. Um, and so now we are starting to backfill with these types of items uh, for more information purposes. So you guys can look at a map and go, oh, okay, I have this sort of coverage right here. I can prototype my agricultural application in a park that is one kilometer away from Communitech. Great. Yeah, some of the uh, use mm -hmm. cases or, or requests that we're seeing, as an example, it may lend to your question, is uh, uh, folks have uh, um, experience characterizing, dimensioning their application and whatnot on a wireline network, and now they want to do a comparable on the 5G network to see how it behaves here as part of their development process. Um, just quickly on one of the other access methods or use cases, we also have the ability to do both wireline and wireless on Encore. So you may have a camera, I'm just picking something up, a camera that you want to use a SIM card for, for wireless connection, but you also want to do a wireline connection. So we are seeing those sort of requests come in to have both wireline and wireless connection because in an IoT or a lot of these applications, you could have both in your application and deployment model. And just to add to that, um, uh, to sorry, what Carl was saying, there may be a need as well to sort of separate the electronics and control systems from the physical, in your case, a robot, right? If, for example, it's outside of the coverage range, you know, there, there obviously can't be anything that you can do about that, but there might be an opportunity to scope the project in such a way that it takes advantage of the coverage range. So that's another way to also look at it. This question wasn't planted, I, I promise. Just building on the last question, um, Kyle and Jeff, and maybe just inspiration, so it's not in the tundra right now, but can you talk about where 5G is going with the carriers who are Ericsson working with? So it's more of the addressing Jeff's comment about TAM. So just an, an overview of, of where you guys know or think 5G is going to see, will it be in the tundra, for example, in five, 10 years' time? So not just focusing on the hub, but the, the market opportunity in two, three years' time with, with the carriers uh, Ericsson are working with, if you can. Um, in terms of the carriers are, are, we're working with, uh, if you think of all the tier one carriers around the world, like Verizon, T-Mobile, AT&T, um, Vodafone, uh, Deutsche Telekom, uh, T um, all of those customers Ericsson has relationships with. In terms of the rollout plans or network expansion plans of those individual operators, uh, I really can't comment on that. Um, because th those are their own plans and they're proprietary and, and we don't, uh, um, you know, divulge that sort of information publicly. I, yes, exactly. So, um, it, again, so 5G, um, 5G will enable certain use cases in uh, remote areas based on fixed wireless access, being able to provide that last mile of connectivity. Um, and that enables new business opportunities for multi, uh, or multi network operators or mobile network operators to provide uh, better coverage in remote areas. Um, however, there are still some challenges to when you talk about the tundra, right? Uh, <laughs> and so, uh, you know, those are uh, challenges that we are interested in working on with, uh, with both the operators and the governments uh, in, in terms of coming up with innovative solutions to those problems. Um, but right now at this time, I don't see or have a line of sight into, uh, into 5G being available in the tundra. And just to, from the infrastructure perspective, again, I can't comment specifically, but I've had some visibility into some of the planning that's taking place. And most, if not all, are the large carriers, because of the bandwidth increase that's going on, are going through a complete uh, re-architecting of the infrastructure to support the bandwidth and that that's being will be demanded by 5G. So these are things that are going on currently as part of a planning phase. But again, I don't have visibility into exactly when they'll go deploy. You hear a lot about trials. But the, they, they understand that in order to get to a true 5G architecture, 
there's a lot of things that need to be changed, including the infrastructure to support the increased bandwidth that's being demanded by a 5G. So say that we have a, like a robot with a, like a Linux machine, that with a computer and a Linux machine, how much support is available from you guys to basically connect our robot to Encore Network and like run our application, basically? Yeah, like, kinda like using one of those uh, infra interfaces, like the, using the, either the, like the embedded approach or using like the, I assume there's a mobile mm -hmm. device that you can use. Yeah, so I could probably take that one, Jeff. Um, so I guess there, there's a couple different approaches on how to connect your robot to the Encore network. Um, one would be to tether it, like I am today, with a mobile device. Um, the other is, in, like, as you move down the development chain um, and go from POC to prototype, you may want to look at the embedded development. And we can provide, uh, we have a supported SOC that you'd be, you know, accountable for doing that integration into your product. Uh, but in terms of linking you up with the technical support of that organization, we could help with that. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah, from a, in, in, again, to, from the compute side, mm -hmm. just getting you connected, then, then mm -hmm. yeah, then mm -hmm. what Kyle said is, publishing copy and yeah for sure we're, we're going to pdf this uh, and send it out to uh, both oce and the hubs uh, for distribution so what's the application procedure could you please walk us through the steps the application sure. so the question was application process right um so it starts with a conversation with a business development manager um and uh, we'll ask for a one-page write-up of what project you want to to run what you want to demonstrate at the end of the project as well as which of these connection methods you think uh, you want to leverage. And then that goes into, um, a, and then that leads to a discussion with Kyle and the Encore team, uh, Jeff and the Sienna team, are on this call on Tuesdays typically, where uh, we will discuss the project with the SME, with the contact of the, the company uh, to understand any more details that we need um, and get to a good spot in terms of, yes, we think there's a good way to connect to the system. So really it's a technical, you know, um, just making sure that there's a way to get your project supported on the system. Following that, um, we, you'll work with the OCE, the business development manager, an application will be open, will help you through the process of writing this application, and from the time that you hit submit, uh, it takes anywhere from four to six weeks where this project will be reviewed. Again, it will be reviewed by the Encore team, as well as an independent uh, set of re reviewers from OCE before a judgment is passed in terms of uh, whether the project is fundable or not fundable. Um, and uh, you know, once it's funded, then there's some contracts that you have to sign up, sign, and, and off you go in terms of uh, uh, running your project. And the project duration could be anywhere up to 12 months. So you don't have to use the whole 12 month period if it's something that you, know, you think you can run in six months, that's, that's fine too. Um, and then you can also leverage the talent edge um, internship as well if you need talent to be able to augment uh, your, your staff who can be working on those projects, there's an option to do that as well, and there's, you know, it'll run through the same process. Is the access only for the funded projects? Sorry? Projects are anyone can access? So there are two streams available. There's the funded stream, so what I described was the funded stream. Um, the unfunded stream it goes through a slightly different process. There's an application, again, an intake that you fill out, and that goes directly to the Encore team for review. And OCE is involved as well, but it's mainly um, you know, the Encore team that does the technical review of that and passes uh, a decision back to the SME through, through us. Yeah. So at the end, do we have to give a demo or other papers? Other exactly. Demo? A demonstration, yeah. Okay. The, the demonstration project stream is, was named aptly thus, mm -hmm. um, so that uh, at the end of your project, the deliverable is a demonstration on what you've accomplished uh, leveraging the Encore network. And it's really up to you as the SME, as the company, as the applicant, to decide what you want to 
decide what it is that you want to demo, right? Do you want to demo the whole thing or do you want to demo the control electronics? Whatever makes sense and whatever scope you provide is what we will be looking for in terms of, okay, have, have you achieved your goals or something? Okay, so I understand it's a demo. Are we then signing over the IP, or what's going on there? No. 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 So we would just demonstrate it to you, and then we, you don't want any of that. You've mm -hmm. you funded it, but you're not a partner. You're not anything like that. You'll sign off and say, that's yours, and that's, that's it. Yeah? Exactly. And, and you've actually opened up a, a point that I don't think we've elaborated enough on in the Encore program. So one of the key advantages of the Encore program is that you're working with five multinational partners. And what that enables small and medium enterprises to do is um, during your demonstration, you're going to have a captive audience from Ericsson, Siena, Talus, CGI, IBM, potentially a few others if we're able to bring on additional partners. Um, and what that access could do is depending on the solution and they're not not everyone not every demonstration project is going to be a home run i think we all know that um but uh what that enables uh is that there's an opportunity for a multinational company to bring your solution to a global market and so because 5g is a global standard once your solution is vetted on a 5g network there's an opportunity for you to bring your solution to China, to Brazil, to you know, Japan, to, to Europe. Um, and you know, the er Ericsson, Siena, Palace, CGIs of the world have that scale that potentially um, you can leverage. And, and through the application process as well, we'll be looking to understand the disruptive nature of the technology and the project that you're putting forward. But in terms of IP, to build on Carl, OCE as well, we don't have a stance in terms of uh, taking any ownership in that. That really belongs to the company. Yeah. Correct, yeah. Uh, what if I'm not an SME? How do I get access to the uh, Encore network? So through the unfunded demonstration okay. project stream, um, you can get access. Uh, the funding is only eligible to SMEs, but we are also interested in, in hearing about other projects that are interested um, in leveraging 5G. And so the, the unfunded stream is open to non-SMEs as well. Okay, and for that, I would apply to Ericsson? You, or? you, can, you can come to us. OC. Still OC. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, sounds good. Yeah, cool. Talked about the uh, SIM card and the kit to integrate into our hardware. Is this available? Uh, yes. How do I get that? So, how do you get access to it? Would be after you have a project um, application approved, and you're onboarded at one of the hubs. Uh, one of my tier one colleagues will. Um, uh, walk you through the technical onboarding, and, and that is where you get access to either you know a commercial Android device, um, potentially a Quectel evaluation board, uh, SIM card. We're also open to SMEs bringing their own devices, however, um, and just borrowing the SIM cards. However, you need to ensure that your device supports the bands of interest that are available on Encore. Do you have any specs that we can verify whether our devices? Uh, for sure. So in, in the roadmap here, uh, what we'll, you'll see is that uh, we've included the LTE bands as well as the LTE and NR bands that we are supporting uh, in the Encore program. Okay. And I think we're putting those on the external site as a public roadmap, aren't we? Or listing the equipment so that folks can go and find what bought what stuff is? is that yeah, I, I, I'm not 100% sure on that, but we will be distributing these slides, so you will have a copy of these. Yeah. And it's not necessary for the companies to be part of this five innovation hub, right? Anyone can apply. That's correct. Yeah, you, you don't have to have an already existing relationship with an innovation hub to apply to the Encore program. That's absolutely true.
Seems like all the questions have come from this side of the room. Uh, might... Save one, sorry. I didn't forget about you. So I think we might have time for a few more. But uh, if there's nothing of it, you know, if nobody wants to ask any more questions, I think we might wrap up. And then we'll also be around for a while. So we're just going to be you know, around to the back of the room. And if you want to connect with any of us from Communitech or OCE, Ericsson or Sienna, we'll be here. Um, thank you all for, for joining us today. Um, yeah, and it was, a, it was a pleasure. Thank you to our speakers as well for making the drive out. <laughs>